So in this example, I'm now going to set up a hardware SNMP device. It's actually a Cisco 2950 24 port switch. It's very old, no longer supported by Cisco, and they're very cheap on the internet. Okay, now I can't install Zabbix Agent on that device, so I've got no other choice really but to use SNMP to monitor it. And that's what it looks like there. It's 24 port Cisco switch. So it's, it's connected to my network now, and I've got network cables plugged into it. And if I look at monitoring discovery, since I got the discovery rule running on my Raspberry Pi for SNMP devices, it actually has found it, 192.168.1.1. I didn't set up a reaction for it, so it didn't auto configure it, but I'm not gonna do that anyway. I'm gonna configure this manually. But later on, if you want to auto configure your devices, it's possible. And another thing about this switch, I've already configured it to have SNMP enabled in the switch's own configuration settings and also added it to the My Community community. Your switch or router or SNMP device will have its own configuration options which you'll need to set unless SNMP is already enabled by default. But if it is enabled by default, it's likely to be on the public community. Also, this switch is on the same network as my other internal hosts and my Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna monitor it from my Raspberry Pi, which is my Zabbix proxy. So I wanna confirm that I can actually do an SNMP lookup on that device. So a good one to check, SNMP walk version 2C, my community, that's the IP address, 192.168.1.1. And a good OID to check, which will be available on just about every SNMP device there is, is 136.121 enter. That gives you some very useful information. It gives you the system description and the system object ID. So I'll use those two. So we've seen system description already. We use that in the actions of the discovery rules in the last video. Here in this description actually says Cisco, says a model number. It also says version. The version is very important for me in this video and I'll get onto that in a moment. But also down here in the sys object ID, this will generally be unique across all types of SNMP devices. So you can just type that into your favorite search engine and you can do some research on the device if you don't have the documentation available for you. Anyway, that's all good. Now, version 12.1. I'm gonna manually set up this device in Zabbix and assign it a template. Okay, so configuration hosts. I'm gonna create a new host. And I'm gonna call it switch. The groups. Templates, network devices. The interface will be an SNMP interface. So add SNMP, IP 161, SNMP version two. And I'm gonna use the macro, which already equals my community. And it's monitored by proxy. So this IP address is from the perspective of the proxy on port 161, which is default. Okay, templates, network devices. There is a Cisco iOS SNMP version two template that you could use. Now, if I look above and below, there's the same templates, but with different versions of Cisco iOS. I have version 12.1. Okay, it says iOS down there, 12.1. So I should use this one here instead. Template Net Cisco iOS versions 12.03 to 12.235. So 12.1 is in between those. So I'm going to use that template. Select. That's good. Macros. I'm using the global macro for my community. There it is. But let's just say the community on my device was something else. I could actually change it here and just hard code it here so that it becomes a host level macro. Okay, so host, and that's all good, and just add. Radio switch. I'm going to let that run for now so that the discovery rules start collecting data and we start getting some items. And also, since it's behind a proxy, the proxy doesn't yet know about this new configuration, so I'll do a config cache reload. Okay, okay so that's been running for about an hour now, and I've now got. 250 items and most of those came from the discovery rules so every interface has several values added to it now so there's, you know, there's plenty there's only one oid that doesn't exist on this 
And that's to do with temperature. That's okay. It's an old switch. If I look at monitoring later starter and apply, we've got five pages worth of items to look at. Fans, CPU. The fan status on my switch is always in a warning state. So there's a trigger attached to that. So I'm going to have to disable that. Temperature, not present. And status, up. If I look at one of the interfaces here, I've got bits received and bits sent. I can filter by bits received. And I can see that four of the interfaces have something happening on them. And there's VLAN one down here. If I could graph those, but also over in hosts there in the switch, I got 28 new graphs and a screen. Graphs. There's plenty. Most of these interfaces don't have anything connected to them, but this one does. Interface 16. I've got a Wi-Fi extender connected to that, so that'll be interesting to watch over time. FA1, that's the Ethernet cable connected to my main router. It's VLAN 1. Anyway, hosts and switch, and there's also a screen that's been created as well. Network traffic last five minutes and you can see that's just one of the templates that you get with Zabbix that you can assign to a Cisco switch or router right away it's very very good and to show you what I just did maps I rebuilt my map so I just added this switch here between my main network firewall and my Raspberry Pi Zabbix proxy I have many more service to add, but all these were discovered in the last video. Everything here is an SNMP device right now. Excellent.